The National Council of Provinces has voted in favor of the National Health Insurance Bill. Eight of the nine provinces have approved the bill, with only the Western Cape voting against it. The NHI system is expected to be implemented in stages once President Cyril Ramaphosa has approved it. However, health care organizations, business and the opposition have all strongly opposed it. They have urged the president not to sign the bill into law and to refer it back to Parliament for reconsideration. Now let's discuss this. We're now joined by teams by Professor Alex van der Heerfe, uh, WITS, the Social Security Systems Administration and Management Studies. Prof, thank you so much for your time. Now we've spoken numerous times about this. So now the NHI is yet to be signed into law by President Cyril Ramaphosa. While that happens, you know, some believe that the model is simply unworkable. You have equally believed that, you know, it will take uh, very long to implement uh, uh, the 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 NHI. Just talk to us uh, through the implications of adopting the bill in its current form, Prof. Well, the bill contains a number of measures that um, are unlikely to ever materialize in uh, uh, over time. They don't exist in any other country and are, are clearly an overreach. Um, so to place them in legislation doesn't mean that they will happen. Uh, but they also involve uh, the establishment of, of frameworks which remove rights from other people, such as the right to purchase your own health care through a medical scheme, for instance. And in that instance, uh, you uh, you're essentially then have to pass a, a sort of a, a severe tests to demonstrate that this is actually appropriate under the circumstances. So on the one hand, there is a question as to whether or not this framework is actually implementable, which it's not. And there is another, which is whether or not it's got measures which are draconian and actually are uh, an infringement of the constitutional rights of many people in South Africa. And on, on that, that score, it's, it's, it's surprising and it's disappointing that it has gone through the kind of process that it has where people have essentially just rammed this bill through instead of giving proper consideration to the kind of health system we should have. And probably the worst effect is that the kind of reforms that we do need to make this health system work have been ignored now for 20 years while people have pretended that they're implementing some grandiose scheme. The reality is nothing has happened and our systems are degrading. Um, and the, this bill will make no difference to what's happening on the ground. Mm. And in fact, you know, those that have opposed the bill, uh, particularly businesses, as well as opposition parties, and of course, uh, the Western Cape province who did not uh, vote, you know, this bill, uh, for this bill, uh, many raising concerns, particularly on the financial front, you know, that the country's shrinking tax base um, lacks the financial muscle to fund this health, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, this health insurance bill. Uh, the, the health ministry, though, insists that, you know, provisions outlined in the NHI bill uh, represents a, a comprehensive and a transformative approach to healthcare. And, and he says, uh, to the point of financing, he says uh, that, uh, you know, it is exactly at this time of difficulty that the country needs to pull together to share these resources, basically trying to alleviate or allay fears of the financial component. I mean, to what extent do you think this is uh, even feasible? Well, I think that's complete nonsense uh, coming from the Department of Health. They, they really show no understanding of public finance at all. Uh, the reality is that the, the amount of taxes that are being raised at this point in time, uh, we're really at the limits at which any uh, additional finances to be raised. We're dropping. We're in a process of actually implementing austerity, according to the Minister of Finance, and budgets are being cut. That's already an indication that the tax system is, is stressed right to the limit. And, uh, and a large part of that has been massive corruption that has impacted on South Africa's economic growth rate. Now, this particular proposal, for it to work, supposedly depends on the implementation of massive tax increases uh, because it wants to substitute for the entire private sector and put it all in one uh, under one purchaser. Now, this is just ludicrous. It's not, it is not feasible to raise more taxes than are being raised at present. So that particular feature is just a nonsense. However, the bill does contain 
provisions which suggest that they would actually prohibit your ability to take out alternative cover, even though the government cannot fund you if they if they prohibit your coverage. So the idea that somehow this is the critical moment to introduce such an odd framework um, is just plain nonsense. It just shows complete ignorance of both health financing, public finance, and how you how you design and implement a health system, a comprehensive health system. This is so out of touch with where our country is today and our health system, and also the way in which health systems are developed in countries equivalent to South Africa and even industrialized countries. This is, uh, this is a maverick proposal. It's a grandiose scheme. There's no evidence to support it as a, as a proposal itself. They've never done a financial appraisal. They've never done an institutional appraisal to see whether or not this is the correct thing to do. It has been essentially an ideological and essentially a dodgy proposal from the beginning in which the idea is they will, uh, they will implement a, a fund which will give concentrate the power of procurement in the hands of the Minister of Health for an entire system. That is not done. And, uh, and, and unfortunately, the, the problem is that they have done this when they're uh, at the same time failing to actually introduce the kind of reforms that would make our health system work better. And unfortunately, this is what happens when you have a, a systematic failure of policy over time, because your, your proposals get more and more grandiose as you fail more and more. So fa consistent and persistent failure generates proposals that are unimplementable, but create the fig leaf of action. Uh, speaking of uh, reforms, Prof, I mean, I, I know a lot of people wouldn't want, you know, uh, to oppose outrightly the, you know, the implementation of a universal health care system, particularly if it is going to be benefiting the poor of the poorest in South Africa. Uh, so what do you then propose, you know, should be done in the interim to fix the country's health care system, which is currently in, in crisis, particularly when you look at the public sector? Yeah, so eight provinces out of nine are in crisis. Mm. So the part of the concern with these proposals is the attempt to kind of nationalize also the provincial structures. So you've got a working health system in the Western Cape and you've got dysfunctional health systems in the other eight. Uh, so firstly, the, that demonstrates that in fact, a public sector can actually work. The other issue in terms of resource allocation, uh, and a growing proportion of South Africa's GDP has gone to public health care. That, that is entirely paid by medical scheme members. So there's a huge transfer from high income groups to low income groups in our current system. That has been embedded in our system. People are not evading the, uh, the cross subsidies that are necessary to cover people without adequate incomes. And basically taxes are raised, general taxes are raised to fund that portion of the system on an ongoing basis uh, through uh, based on how much you can basically generate from the different tax bases. So those, that is the system we have at present. But the big problem we have in the public sector is massive corruption, that this government has absolutely no political will to address. It's potentially removing a about 40% of our public health pr productivity at the moment. There's massive corruption. Nothing has been done about the corruption in Gauteng, in the Eastern Cape, in the Northern Cape, in Mpumalanga, where the irregular expenditure is off the charts. But there are no arrests. There are no senior politicians who are in jail. There is no in apparent investigation of any of these matters. And despite the fact that 1.2 billion rand was extracted from one hospital in Gauteng, none of that money has been uh, brought back into the system. No investigation has stopped the rot. And the companies responsible for that are still operating and still selling services to the Gauteng Department of Health. These are, this is the kind of system that we have. It's not about additional resources. It's about making sure that our actual allocation of resources hit the ground and before they get stolen. So, and the problem is there's no interest, no political will to address that. So uh, this is really a concern is that this fig leaf of reform that is presented is actually an attempt to distract one's attention from the fact that there is massive extraction of resources from all of our public services, including and particularly in the case of healthcare, where procurement is an extensive part of the system.